Okay. So a couple of days ago I did a PCR and um, a gel electrophoresis and I got this result, right? Uh, I wanted to analyze the gel a bit because I don't care how good you are, uh, you're gonna fail eventually and you're gonna need to troubleshoot. Um, so, first of all, I did my PCR by amplifying a fragment from this plasmid which is called PCDNA 3.1, a plasmid that I modified. So I inserted a mutation right here in the sequence. Okay? Um, and I wanted to amplify this fragment. So from this primer here, this is my uh, reverse primer, to this primer here. This is my, uh, my forward primer. So if you amplify from promoter forward, to promoter reverse, I should have got uh, gotten this fragment, right, which is um, about 750 base pairs. Uh, let me just uh, simulate a PCR to show you what I'm talking about. Right, so from, from this plasmid I'm gonna amplify using these two uh, primers here, and I'm gonna get this product. Uh, this product should have run on the gel like this. So this is the gel simulation right here. This is my ladder. It's a 1KB ladder that I, uh, that I used in my experiment. And this is the Amplicon, um, which as you can see should have migrated at about between the 0 0.7 and 0 0.8 mark. Now here's my picture. So here's the gel that I got. Let's go into more detail. So first of all you can see these two bands here at about uh, between 4 and 4k and 5k band. So this uh, these are not a problem because as you can remember I put in my PCR reaction one microliter of plasmid. So this is just background plasmid right here. So I'm not gonna worry about these fragments. This right here, uh, remember I've loaded two reactions. This is my fragment right here. So you cannot see very well probably because the picture is uh, crap but it migrates exactly uh, between the 700 and the 800 band. Now, the problem is here. What are those bands here at, uh, at the 1200 base pairs mark? Well, I had this issue before because I already built my plasmid and uh, what I'm trying to do now is just uh, optimize my PCR reaction uh, to remove uh, these two non-specific amplifications right here but apparently I wasn't successful so what I did to um, to build my plasmid from uh, I loaded the whole PCR reaction into a gel and basically I've uh, isolated just these two fragments from the gel so uh, let me show you let me put this in red was making fun of me. So this is one fragment that I, that I isolated and this is the other one. So after I <clears throat> I cut out these two fragments from, uh, from the gel and then purify them, I can use that DNA into any downstream application I might have. So for example I used it to assemble if you remember, these are like bricks for my uh, mammalian expression vector. Um, I wasn't able to, uh, to get rid of this non-specific amplification. I've tried inserting the whole reaction into my assembly, but my plasmid assembled uh, using this fragment instead of this one. So my assembly wasn't, uh, wasn't as expected.
uh, after isolating these two fragments from the gel and putting them uh, into my assembly, I got the right plasmid. So this only happens with this fragment right here. I don't know why. Probably I didn't choose my, uh, my primers very well. Um, I have no clue what, what happens. I did try to, uh, you know, uh, use different kinds of annealing temperatures, times, uh, extension times, extension temperatures, and so on. But yeah, I wasn't successful. So I must add this extra step right here. Uh, basically, in the next how-to video, I'll, uh, I'll show you how, uh, how to do a gel extraction. So I'll load uh, my full PCR products into a gel, into a well, and then I'm going to isolate the fragment that I want, and uh, that will go into into my downstream um, application and reactions. Okay, so hopefully this uh, this has been useful for you beginners, and in the future I'll uh, make some videos explaining uh, different techniques like gel isolation. Who knows? Maybe uh, maybe an assembly, and uh, a mini prep stuff like that. And of course, I'll do troubleshooting, uh, because I repeat, it doesn't matter how good you are, I think for every success there are like 10 or 15 failures, seriously, yeah.